So very good morning to all of you. And uh, I'm just, uh, introduce, uh, just I will give you the brief inf information about because most of your people are from entomology and pathology background. And the nematodes is a, such an, a, a, such an, a, a, a constraint to our agriculture uh, that the, in Marathi, it is known as Sutra Kurumi. Normally, in the, from the Vedas time, we, in the historical literature, in India's ancient history, if you check it, in the, from the Vedas and in our, in, in our most of the uh, ancient literature, it has been mentioned as the Kurumi. So, I think now also we are having, uh, uh, you know, deworming. Sometimes we have the tablets and the doctors are advising that you take these the, the deworming tablets after the six months of the interval. Even in for small children in their uh, abdomen, the, uh, uh, the these nematodes are also present. And, and many of you have experienced in your from childhood that uh, this nematode is present in our intestines and they are uh, continuously feeding on our the uh, blood and other food material. So the nematodes are not new to the Indians or not new to the Indian farming system. They are present uh, from historical times because in our Vedas, in our literatures, and in many, many of our ancient uh, uh, writings, the nematodes were mentioned. But uh, the correct classification and the exact uh, taxonomy is not from the India, it is from the, basically from the, the, the Western countries. So the nematodes is nothing but nema means, uh, nematodes means it's a round worms. Uh, it's a separate phylum is there, just like if we have the phylum in animal kingdom, uh, phylum serendrata, phylum porifera, phylum, uh, 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 phylum uh, porifera, cylindrata, uh, insecta, mollusca. These are all phylums, just like the, the nematodes is a, a separate phylum. Now you can understand when the any animal is keeping in under the separate phylum, that means their numbers, their population, their, their, uh, uh, their interaction with the nature is a very specific. Mostly the nematodes are soil inhabitant and they are water loving. Let's say it's, they are hydrophilic. And most of the nematodes are present in the soil and they are animal parasitic, they are human parasitic, they are insect parasitic and they are plant parasitic. Because uh, we say the animals, mostly the kingdom animalia, these are mostly they are parasitic. They are feeding on each other or let's say feeds on the, the another component of the nature. So you can see here in the diagram, uh, I will show you with a pointer. So in this, uh, uh, you can see here, this is the typical plant parasitic nematode. Now, how, are, uh, how you would say that this is a typical plant parasitic nematode? Because the body organization is a such a way that the, here is you can see the stylet. The stylet is nothing but it is the syringe-like or let's say needle-like uh, uh, organ to puncture the roots. And as soon as they puncture the roots, through this, the glands, they secrete the enzymes, they secrete the enzymes, and through that enzymes, they liquefy the plant cell, take the entry into the plant root, and it causes the phenomena which we called as the parasitism. So this is a very typical plant parasitic nematode. You can see here the glands, the glandular portions. This is the intestine, which is the uh, covers approximately nine, uh, 80 to 90 percent of the area. Here in this intestine, you can also see the 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 reproductive systems like the eggs, maybe ovaries, there are uh, uh, all the ovarioles and uterus. And if the male reproductive system is also present, when he is the metal is a male. And lastly, you can see here in the tail portion, there's a rectum, which is a post uh, digestive system part. So very typically it is arranged into uh, this body. And this, this is the, uh, where we can say, this nematode is not like the protozoa, this is not like the um, bacteria. They are multicellular, well equipped uh, itself. They have the nervous system. They have the, their own uh, 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 
uh, sensory and the chemo reception system. Their own, they have their own skeleton system. Own, they have their own uh, circulatory and the let's say we can digestive system. So this is a very well perfect uh, uh, the animal which is we have positioned into the phylum nematoda. Now you can see here the the there are certain if just like an insect, just like an other animal. The all nematodes are not the plant parasitic nematode. Some of the nematodes are free living. What does the mean of the free living? For the uh, for the understanding of the students and audience, the free living means those those who don't have any course, who don't have any kinds of the uh, you know the literature load and even tension from the family like that. You have to search your job and uh, free living means you are free freely living in the soil. In the, this. Uh, uh, they are just feeding on the organic matter, enjoying their life. Uh, the male and female, they made, they reproduce, they lay the eggs, the next generation. It's just like, just like a free living means, sometimes we are also feeling that, sir, we are also struggling for our job and for settling in our life. Free living means this lifestyle is in such a way that there is no kinds of burden on them. Either way you attack on the plant, either way you attack on the insect, either way you attack on any kind, they don't have any kinds of obligations, so they are called as free living. Some of them are called as animal parasitic. Now, some of them you can see here the one photograph I have shown that is a it is a one of the leg of the ladies, and you can see here the postule and the swelling. And from that swelling, the nematodes is coming out. It is one kind of the disease which is normally present in the coastal areas of our uh, of our country, and it, this disease is caused by the nematode which actually penetrate inside the our wounds and this nematode is carried by the insect is known as the mosquito insect normally in the coastal areas where humidity is high where the insect uh, mosquito breeding is more and in that area this uh, animal parasitic nematodes this is one example i'm showing you there are a lot of examples are there that is uh, Ascaris lumicoides, you, everybody knows that in our intestine, this Ascaris is present and it's actually feeding on the our uh, uh, digestive juice and uh, digestive content. Now you can see here another picture, there is an insect parasitic nematodes. Some of the insect parasitic nematode means some of the nematodes are attacking on the insect. And here we have our interest for a biological control. And tomorrow, one special lecture uh, we have assigned for you, only for entomopathogenic nematodes. What is means by so the entomopathogenic I... Hello? Hello? My voice is audible? Yes, sir. Hello? Because uh, I am connected to the uh, landline uh, net connection. So my in internet connection uh, will be stable. So maybe you can check at your end whether you are uh, uh, connected to the stable network connection. Or if anything or problem is there, please inform me I either in through chat box or maybe you can say in between also. Uh, 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 my voice is audible now, very much clear? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So some of the uh, nematodes are uh, insect parasitic nematodes. And these are the nematodes which is uh, attacking on the insects. So attacking on the insects means you can have their you can have our interest because the insects are also causing a lot of damage to our crop plants. And here we want to reduce the load of the uh, 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 the use of the chemicals and utilization of the agrochemicals in our environment and in nature, particularly when we talk about the, the green farming or let's say organic farming, where the, the nematodes which are attacking on the insects have prominent role. Here you can also see the nematodes which have the stylets in their mouth, that is the plant parasitic nematodes. And another picture I'm, I will show you here, the nematodes which is feeding on other nematodes like mononchids, some of the nematodes are attacking on other nematodes, just like some of the insects are also attacking on another insects also. Now, I will just quickly wind up this slide that where are abundance of this soil animals where you can see if you uh, take one meter of soil, the soil, and you if you have, if you check this soil for the abundance of the animals, you can see 
the nematodes numbers exceeds 120 raised to 6 that much of the nematodes is present only in one meter of uh, one meter square of the soil you can see the all other animals let's say the uh, earthworms insects uh, the spiders ants and let's say the uh, columbolans and the mites whatever you, uh, as per the comparison uh, nematode outnumber here so there is a one a famous quote by the father of nematology by Nathan Augustus Cope, that is any quote, that if the, all the matter in the universe is swept away, the, uh, still the world is would be recognizable with the film, thin film of nematodes. So this, this much of amount uh, um, of abundance of the nematodes is present in per meter square of the soil. Now the interesting facts about this nematode is that these are the most numerous animal there's the most abundance animal on the uh, uh, in the soil and they are mostly microscopic one of the longest nematode we have uh, 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 in our literature it has been the 26 feet in the blue vein where you have just i told you that the simple they have the simple morphology and they don't have the circulatory respiratory skeletal system but it doesn't mean that they don't have the the system is working there is no organ system, definite organ system for circulatory system, so respiratory system, and there is no skeleton because they are uh, 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 metamorphically uh, uh, they are formed. And this is here the quote, which is uh, the uh, normally most of the nematologists we, they use that if all the matters in the universe except nematodes were swept away, uh, our world would be still dimly recognizable. Uh, with a thin film of nematodes because everywhere will, will be there uh, the nematodes are present. This is the general characteristics where they are aquatic means they are mostly water loving. They are unsegmented. There is no segmentations just like earthworm or just like in insects there we have the segmentations of the body. There is no such a, uh, segmentation in the nematodes. They are uh, simple morphology is there. They are most important they are appendageless. There is no appendages there is no such kind of legs or uh, uh, the other, uh, uh, just like in insects, the appendages are attached to the body portion. There's no such kind of the uh, uh, body portion is, uh, uh, is not there. That is their appendageless. Simple morphology, that means they are transparent. Uh, this is a very particular characteristics of the nematode body. They are very much transparent. So we can be able to see their, uh, their body structure. Uh, without a dissection, without uh, if you uh, if you feed the nematodes with some of the fluorescence protein or let's say the uh, uh, some of the tags or protein tags which have the fluorescence effect, we can able to see their uh, movements inside their body because of because the body is so transparent. There is no such kind of pigmentation or uh, uh, no such kinds of the uh, coverings are also uh, uh, present on the their body because they are transparent. Uh, the fifth characteristic is the they are bilaterally symmet uh, symmetrical. Bilateral symmetrical means if you uh, dissect the nematodes uh, 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 in between their body, the two sections are the mirror images of each other. That means just like the uh, uh, whatever they are the left side, the same will be at the right side. So there is a bilateral symmetry is present. Generally bisexual, there is no uh, few nematodes have their uh, the characteristics like the hermaphroditism and parthenogenesis, the, the kind of advanced uh, reproductive systems uh, uh, they have developed. But normally these nematodes are bisexual. Uh, they are vermiform and round worms, uh, and they are biotrops. They are actually feeding on the uh, the uh, on the animals. So I think this is this much of the introduction is. Uh, uh, I think necessary, and you can see here in this uh, picture, these are the nematodes are feeding. This is the nematodes which is uh, feeding on the. This is the plant cell. The nematode is feeding on the plant cell with the help of this stylet. Some of the nematodes able to uh, uh, penetrate the stylet up to the xylem and uh, uh, phloem tissues. Very long stylet is there, and they can able to withdraw the, the food material from the uh, plant cells. Some of the nematodes are they take entry inside the root. And uh, uh, they stay there and they develop into the females. And they, we call them as sedentary and the parasites. Some of the nematodes, they take entry inside the plant root and they migrate from one point to the another point. They travel inside the uh, root system. That is, they are migratory endoparasites. So they, 
the this is kind of different and various feeding uh, types of the plant parasitic nematodes uh, you can uh, you you will able to see uh, here you, you can see the the life cycle of the root knot nematode this is nematode is it, it, it is in the first in this vermiform juvenile stage it actually attacks on the plant root cells they take the entry inside the plant root you can see here the they uh, they take entry in, inside the uh, the plant root from the root tip side and there they actually uh, feed on the plant cell, uh, root cells once they have recognized that this is the cell where they can get maximum food they they become stationary there and uh, they, they then they their body will transform into the uh, metamorphosis uh, 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 and develops into the uh, very sedentary types of the female and they reproduce there or sometimes they develop uh, themselves into the uh, single female can lay the eggs like the uh, parthenogenesis and these eggs and from these eggs again these juveniles uh, come out of the uh, uh, eggs and they again uh, travel in the search of the new host so you can see here the galls galls means is a bulging or, or let's say swelling on the roots and inside the galls these females are present uh, so the damage is caused by the nematodes is, uh, uh, you can see the pictures here, the foliar's damage, uh, mostly the, uh, because the attacks on the root, uh, particularly the root system is, uh, uh, is much more damaged. And because of that, the translocation of the nutrients, translocation of the water, the uptake of nutrients, water of the plants is hampered. And because of that, the, the plants is unable to cope up the abiotic and biotic stresses. You can see here the banana plants, um, they collapse because of they don't have the strong uh, support from the soil because the nematodes attacks on the particular the root portions. Uh, this is the tomato uh, uh, root uh, where you can see here the, the numerous galling and heavy galling is present on the uh, uh, root system. And because of this heavy galling system, the the balance for the translocation of the water and nutrients in the plant is disturbed. Plants unable to uh, uh, bear the burden of the water stress, bear the burden of the uh, even any uh, insect attack, and plants succumbs to the attack. And at the same time, this is heavy warning is also favors uh, the the uh, attack by the other secondary pathogens, just like the other physarium, uh, pythium. Uh, kind of the soil bond uh, gels are present. So nematodes actually uh, uh, actually uh, succumbs the dead uh, for the nematodes. I think this is the here you can see the lot of symptoms on the various uh, agricultural commodities by the, the plants. So this is all about the nematodes and their, the, uh, the, how they cause the damage to the uh, our crop. Uh, any question uh, up till now? Because uh, if anyone uh, have any questions in their mind that so how is the nematodes and what is their uh, importance in, in our crop production and any, any question? Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. yes any sir. questions up to, uh, Any question uh, up till now that how the nematodes and how the importance there? In the... Please speak up. I have you understood what is the likely what I have uh, what up there about the nematodes? Have you understood it? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, hello, sir. Yeah, go ahead. I have one question. Yeah. Sir, how to identify the symptoms of nematode caused in a human being? Yeah, in human being, you can have the uh, 
let's say in human there are particularly uh, three nematodes are very important for us the one is uh, present in our uh, uh, body in, in our digestive system that is ascaris lumbricoides this nematode is uh, many of times uh, due to our uh, the food which we are taking from the other uh, from the outside food of uh, uh, our gastric content is a such a way uh, it's making in such a way that this nematode is surviving in our body attaching themselves to the our intestine and the sucking continue sucking the our blood so the ascaris is one nematode uh, uh, in a human parasitic nematode is very much important from historical times this nematode is as have association with our uh, digestive gut and uh, for that the symptoms mostly is that we do not have any hunger we don't uh, we feel some kind of the, uh, tired or the energy less and uh, 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 our rectum is uh, uh, every time is not uh, uh, well well in uh, let's say our if the digestive tract is disturbed that means every system is disturbed so for ascaris only we have the deworming is only the op option with us so continuously and regular deworming is one, one important aspect in ascaris secondly the another nematode is uh, known as the uh, loya loya uh, and this nematode is to be carried out by the insect known as a uh, house fly and uh, this loya loya nematode is infecting to our eyes uh, particularly uh, uh, our, the water in our eyes, uh, in that water, this nematode is surviving. And uh, many of times we have to go for the surgery uh, to the medical uh, uh, medical persons to remove this nematode from our eyes. So the one that is one nematode that is a loya loya. Uh, normally, uh, if you go and ask to the doctor, this nematode is also causing a lot of damage to the, our uh, uh, our people. And third one is the intro. Entropius, which is uh, I have shown you the uh, entropulosis that is the in the wounds. So once the wounds is in come come in contact with the moist soil or let's say a uh, moist uh, air or a humid air, the septic septicemia will be there, and due to that septicemia, the nematodes able to enter uh, in our body through the wounds. So these are the some of the nematodes. Other nematodes are also there, but that much of not causing damage. But these three nematodes. Uh, is also the, causing a lot of damage uh, to the uh, our uh, human system. Okay. Yes, any any other? Any other? Uh, any any have any questions that how to? Uh, uh, we can have the questions on this, how the metals are causing the damage to the plants and how to identify them. Uh, because in the farmer's field, we do not know uh, whether the metal, because the metals is attacking on the root portions. And if you have, if you go for uh, observing the each and every root, that will be the destructive uh, process. So uh, how to then uh, identify the, uh, the symptoms caused by the uh, nematodes to the plants uh, that that is the most important and a very difficult task before the, all the uh, plant, plant protection scientists that uh, whether this uh, plant is uh, infected by nematode or it is by uh, any other fungi or uh, bacteria or let's say from the insect point of view. That, that is a very, very, uh, very critical process where we have to identify whether uh, observation of the roots is only the uh, way to uh, to finalize the that uh, finalize the our uh, observations in a, such a way that that uh, the nematodes are causing damage to the plants. Okay, so any questions with respect to, to the introduction? If not, then uh, we can go. We can go for the management aspect. Yes. 
Uh, slides are visible. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you can have, I think uh, in your daily uh, newspaper reading, you might have come across the, the readings from that the our poisonous, uh, our pesticide sprays are turning into now the poison. Uh, because uh, agriculture is a, such a multi-facet profession where the uh, all our private partners, government uh, uh, from government point, research point, R and D, uh, private and their R and D, uh, regularly they are updating. Regularly they are uh, evolving with the new molecules of the uh, pesticides uh, of the pesticides to control the insect pests and the diseases. And uh, I think from uh, uh, most of the you are from aware about it that uh, how the uh, the historical developments have taken place in the pesticides. Uh, insecticides, even uh, in the uh, uh, fungicides also. Uh, initially, we were using the uh, halogenated carbohydrate, uh, 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 halogenated carbons uh, related compounds like BHC, DDT, aldrin, like compounds we were using. And after this, uh, uh, the Silent Spring book that's by the Rachel Carson, um, we were aware that the if you are continue to use these kinds of the poisonous chemicals in the environment, definitely it is going to affect on the ecosystem uh, to the particular the human existence also, because nowadays these chemicals are everywhere in our food chain. So uh, that's, uh, that is what we have to do for the, the management, because we don't want to control uh, each and every one, because everyone have their role in the ecosystem. So keeping their population below to the level of their uh, economic injury level, or let's say keeping their population below to the level where they cause the damage. That is, I think, the management we are actually, um, uh, actually what we are understanding. And here, particularly when the matters uh, uh, comes, uh, we can have a lot of strategies uh, for the management of the new matters. Let's say the first strategy is that you can see here the uh, a strategy like the uh, deep blowing. Now it's a very simple agronomical practices. That is, uh, uh, in the summer, in the month of the summer, we are actually blowing over land. Uh, uh, a very deep blowing. Uh, the practice is normally uh, Indian farmers are using. But it's a very much importance for the also keeping the population of the nematodes uh, uh, below. How it is because we are exposing these nematodes, which are exposing the the nematodes is present in the soil. So any uh, operation in the soil and then expose them to the a heat or expose them to the a, a, a sunlight uh, will have the beneficial effect. Uh, uh, and uh, this is particularly normally happens where uh, it's particularly followed in the, uh, for the management of root knot nematode, let's say any form nematode in the cotton, root knot nematode in the vegetables, uh, even uh, uh, deep blowing is also is practicing in the uh, uh, particularly in the North India for the control of the uh, cereal system nematode in the wheat. So deep blowing is having uh, very much uh, impact on uh, management of the uh, nematodes because uh, nematodes undergoes the anhydrobatic stages. Nematode undergoes the water stress situations. Nematodes, uh, they have developed themselves into such a way that they can able to survive under any uh, any conditions. There is no water, no air, no, uh, uh, let's say, uh, oxygen even. But if you expose them to the uh, uh, sunlight or let's say to heat, uh, the, that can be able to eradicate or that can be able to keep uh, manage the uh, their, uh, uh, their survival stages. Or let's say we expose them to the heat. Uh, what will happen? That it will going to kill the uh, uh, there. These are the stages like the cyst. Some of the cyst stages are there. Like some of the eggs are also there. Uh, if we expose them, definitely they have the their lethal effects. So this is the deep blowing, which is a very normal agronomic practices. Particularly, I think you have also have known about this deep blowing. It's um, only one common operation for control of the also the 
the diseases like insect, soil worm insects also. The next one is the soil solarization. I think you have uh, might have known about the soil solarization. It's very much uh, practice we are actually following because we are a tropical country where we receive the maximum sunlight uh, in the daytime. And in the soil solarization particularly, we have the, we are covering the soil uh, with the thin film of this uh, uh, polythene uh, uh, paper. Uh, and uh, what we are actually here following is that we are trapping this heat inside uh, 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 inside to these beds. And we are raising the temperature of that bed, certainly by three degree to five degree uh, as compared to the outside temperature and which can enough and which can uh, 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 enough for to control the nematodes inside the that. Particularly in the nursery beds where the nursery are present, this uh, soil solarization practices are followed. Seed treatment, uh, uh, because most of the nematodes are seed born, they uh, take entry from the, uh, from the very initial stage of the crop. So seed treatment also uh, is very, very important. Uh, uh, we can able to eliminate and control the nematodes at very at early stages. Then the various agronomical practices like the uh, trap cropping, intercropping, relay cropping, uh, which have because if you change the crop phenology, uh, it definitely want to hamper on the the nematode population status. Uh, if you uh, you can see here the wheat is uh, cultivated with the mage, so both are from cereal, but they don't, but, but both have the different uh, uh, crop environment. So it it is going to affect on uh, overall, it's going to affect on soil uh, ecosystem and which is uh, not favorable to the nematodes. So uh, many of the agronomical practices also uh, 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 are used uh, to control the nematodes. The next one is the botanicals. You can see the neem and uh, marigolds which you are planting. Uh, neem cake is uh, very much important uh, slide, my slides are visible. Not, not, my slide. not visible. Hello. Slide, slide visible. Which are the little to the Hello. Malaka, my No, sir, your slides are not visible. No, sir. Nice, I'll slide this up there. Now? No, 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 Yes, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Dikra. Dikra? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible. Okay. So most of uh, uh, the botanical source we are using, um, most of the plants, they have the nematoxic or nematicidal compounds, uh, like the neem having a directing and marigolds having alpha tocinid in their roots. So uh, if you incorporate these compounds into the, uh, uh, in the soil, uh, uh, these have had their allelopathic effect, or let's say the very uh, repellent effect in the soil, and that have also, uh, mm -hmm. have the control of the nematodes population. Mm -hmm. The next one is the biological control. Biological control, uh, we will see each and every method in detail, but I will just give a good right information. The biological control is very, very much effective in nematode because I have shown you some, some of the slides in the previous uh, uh, PPT presentation. Some of the nematodes are uh, taking entry into, inside the root. Some of the nematodes take entry in, inside and they travel inside the plants. But once they, uh, because they have also their enemies and some of the fungi, some of the uh, bacteria, they are actually able to propagate and proliferate on these nematodes. So we can also have the interest in that and we can be able to just like trichoderma, pseudomyces, pseudomonas, pasturia, these are the some of the uh, these are the some of the organisms which are have their biocontrol effects on the nematodes. And uh, lastly, we can able you can use the chemicals. So here my purpose is to uh, tell to you when we are talking about nematode management, doesn't mean only to use of chemicals. We have to use carefully 
the judicial application of each and every matter. Now, and it is depends on the population dynamics. I will tell you what is the population dynamics. So let's take, take an example. Suppose our army, suppose they get some of the link that so and so places, some of the terrorists are there and we have to, today we have to go, we have to hit them and we have to come back. But after that, once we realize that only few terrorists are there, only one or two terrorists are there, why should we then send all our the troops or all our army in a huge numbers? This is a decision making. This is I'm giving an example. Decision making is most important in the in the integrated pest management. In any integrated management, decision making means we need, we should know that what is the population status of the matter. If thousand seedlings are there, suppose. If thousand tomato seedlings are there and only one seedling is get infected by the suppose nematodes or let's say fungi or bacteria, we should, can we go um, uh, for control or spraying of the nematicides, spraying of the fungicides for all over the seedlings? No, we should eradicate, we should eliminate or we should separate that one seedling from other and we can able to control it. So once we know that the population of the any organism at least we can able to judge or at least we can able to, uh, let's say, uh, verify ourselves that, okay, we are going for the control. So here you can see one graph, there is a percent yield, 25, 50, 75, 100. And you can see here the nematode numbers per plant. Now you can see at a, some at certain level, crop can compensate the injury. Crop is not like that. Crop is not like an intolerant tool like that. Because crop has to survive. Crops have the, the plant have the well roots, uh, well established root system. They have their root cells. They have their cell wall. They have the cellulose compounds. Apart from this, this each cell is packed with the, the uh, antimicrobial compounds, plant bodies, everything is there. So crop can able to compensate the damage, certain kinds of damage the crop can compensate. Crop can, uh, you can see the crop can able to survive in that situation. And I have seen this in, in the field. When fall army worm came on the mage, uh, I think two years, two to three years back, 2018 and 2019, that once it was noticed in first time in the country and it was spread in our Maharashtra and uh, in our Karnataka area. May, in, many of the, in many of the cases, the plants able to survive under the heavy attack also. The mage also plant able to survive in that way because the crop have their own tolerant capacity. But beyond that, if the population is increasing, the fall army worm, nematodes, or let's say the small sucking pest, if the, their population is increasing, definitely the crop is not able to survive in that case, or crop cannot able to produce the enough yield and you can see this is the point where you can see at this nematode numbers or let's say any base number, the yield is declining. Yield declining as the number of nematodes, number of pests increases. So you can see where we have to take the decision. So the initial nematode population and threshold level means damaging level, that is PI and PT. So why I'm telling you my friends, because in most of the question, uh, in most of the SRF and NET, they are asking them a very tricky question on this. That what is the initial population? What is the final population? And what is the threshold population? So you can see here PI, PT, and PF. PI means initial population level. Initial population means the initial at when you are sampling with at that an initial population level. PT means a threshold level. Threshold level means your damaging level let's say the pathogenic level means the level at which they cause the damage. And PF means a final population. So nematode control required only if PI is greater than PT. If the initial population level is, is more than the threshold population level, definitely we have to go for nematode control or nematode management. So the nematode, we have, this is here mathematics we need to understand. And, and my friends, 
this is where our protection scientists should work should do some of the research because why people are using agrochemicals in heavy quantity in heavy doses in universities in icr institute in, in every r and d institute they say suppose 2 uh, gram per liter of the water suppose any chemical x y z is 2 gram per liter of water when the farmer reaches to the any agri clinic or let's say farmer uh, 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 insecticide seller he says instead of 2 gram you can use 4 gram and when the farmer at the, on his own field when he using he is using 10 gram why because he understand that if i use the maximum quantity of insecticide or maximum quantity of pesticide my i will get immediate result my pest my, my pest population will be lower down immediately but that does mathematics doesn't work every time and because of this 99% of the chemicals are wasted in the nature only 1% is reaching to the pest same is happening in the nematode also if we don't know the population level we don't know the exactly the my numbers of the nematodes in my field in my nursery in my uh, poly house in my greenhouse we do we do not able to uh, uh, justify ourselves to take the nematode control measures we should take or not and this is here we are most of the uh, mathematics goes wrong and that's why we are having the our sprays is turning into the poison sprays i think normally in maharashtra particularly those uh, those are from maharashtra might have known about the how much chemicals we are spraying on cotton how much spray chemicals we are spraying on the rice how much chemicals we are spraying on grapes how much chemicals we are spraying in pomegranate uh, it, it, it this is this is just a wastage because because we don't know the population dynamics if you know the population dynamics definitely we can able to target we can able to hit the stage where our uh, our aim of nematode management our aim of management of pest can be achieved and this is so where we actually work on it all the scientists we have to work on it. and from here we have to go for the each and every method now i will first cover the prevention and regulatory methods or let's say legal methods i will not go into the deep aspects of this now uh, I, I, uh, i will not make you bore regarding to it because you all know you have all background regarding it but just i will give the very light crisp about it which is most important for your examination point of view what is prevention many of the times and i think most of you have seen and we have experienced from last two years that uh, the, during this covid period uh, this statement is i think is most important nowadays that prevention is better than cure and uh, daily we are using the mask and that is only the uh, uh, the major we can have that prevention is better than cure so what is it means in case of nematodes or any pest prevention means at least we can able to check or control the spread of the diseases i will give one example in this uh, in pomegranate oily spot disease is present that is due to the bacteria and this uh, this disease is is spreading from the south india to the, the the central india and how it has come to our state or our our, uh, our area because there is no check there is no control there is no uh, authority to check whether the seedlings have we are we are bringing the seedlings from let's say bangalore or let's say chennai let's say from south india let's from sri lanka or we are bringing we are transferring the seedlings from one place to another places and nobody is checking there whether these seedlings have the nematodes seedlings have any pests seedlings have any insect seedlings have any mite or seedlings have anything so prevention is better than cure here is most important we should treat before it infect we should treat before it infect and here it, which is very very much important because sanitizers nowadays we are using it means it should we are treating before it going to infect us so legal enforcement is most important and in india from the british times we have the laws and we once one law is i think everybody know is the dip act and that dip act was a, a pass in in the 1940 uh, 1940 14 where uh we have the checks on prevention of the introduction of this some of this pests and one organization is working uh this question asked in one of the net examination that which organization are uh, is working 
in uh, regulatory measures for control of the insect pest in India, and that is the Directorate of Plant Protection, Quarantine and Storage. It is in the Faridabad and is working under the Ministry of Agriculture Government of India. And through this, what is most important that international check and domestic check. International check means they are our airports, seaports, land ports, for commercial, uh, the material is coming from, commodities coming from the outside the country. We are checking at our airport, seaport, and we are giving uh, this, um, uh, the license, let's say it's a quarantine license is there. So we are giving the quarantine license to the, that commodity. And then and then, the after the thorough inspection by NBPGR, that is National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources, uh, thorough inspection by the, the, the scientists from this, this institute, then and then the commodity is allowed to uh, land in our India. And this is, happens in most of the nights. I have heard one case that one of the potato consignment was uh, was arriving from the Western country to India. I think this is this is a story from, I think, uh, just a five to seven years back. And this uh, potato was a full of nematodes. This potato commodity was having the full of nematodes and at the Chennai airport, uh, sorry, not Chennai airport, sorry, Chennai, Chennai seaport, uh, this consignment was cancelled. This consignment was, uh, 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 the commodity was uh, not uh, uh, being checked or even commodity was not able to allow enter into the India because we have the very strong international law, very strong international legal frame is important. Same way in India, we have domestic uh, uh, legislation that is for the golden nematode, which is at of the potato, uh, which is included in the DI pack in 1971, uh, which is present in the uh, uh, Uti area in the South India, where the potato cultivation is there in the uh, nearby to the Uti hills, where the uh, potato is infected by the uh, golden nematode. And if you go, uh, uh, if you're traveling in that area, and if you wanted to come back, to your state, you have to go through the domestic quarantine. That means you have to wash your shoes, wash your clothes um, uh, at the airport and seaports, so uh, so that the nematode uh, is not able to uh, move from the uh, that area to the new area. So this is the one uh, uh, TNU Act is also there. State-owned legislation is also there, and central legislation is also there. In spite of these legislations, we still we do not have very strong. Uh, uh, legislation in the domestic transport, where most of these seedlings, most of these nurseries from the South India, most of the nurseries from the Maharashtra, we are able to send the seedlings to the each and every corner of the country. And from that seedlings also, the nematodes or maybe another, another paste diseases, disease samples are also going to the uh, and reaching to the each and every corner of them. So prevention is better than cure. These are the regulatory methods. And uh, uh, if we have these two the laws, but we need more uh, uh, strong legislature in this regard. Now comes to the physical method. The physical methods means use of the, the, the thermotherapy or let's say cold therapy to control the nematodes because nematodes uh, can't tolerate the temperature beyond 15 degrees Celsius because it's a very soft animal and uh, uh, it's unable to control, uh, unable to uh, survive beyond the high temperature like 50, 60 degrees. And the, this storage range we can use uh, for the seed treatment. And that is a hot water treatment. We can, uh, 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 this strategy, we can use it. And um, uh, the hot water treatments means we have to dip the seeds or planting material into the hot water. Uh, and for the bulbs, palms, tubers, rhizomes, or let's say in the seed material, uh, this is a very highly successful method normally people are using now nowadays. But here, what is most important is temperature and time combination is most important. Uh, temperature and time combination because these hot water treatments, uh, your objective is to only kill the nematode or only uh, eliminate the nematodes, which is residing inside the seed. But if you keep the seeds and planting material in this hot water for a longer time, it definitely going to affect on their germination because it's going to hamper on their embryo and other uh, uh, seed parts. So temperature and time combinations is all standardized for each and crop, uh, each for each crop and each material. Uh, like uh, the in case of the ornamental crops, like the where bulbs are there, to control the bulb nematode like dietylene, which is uh, 
uh, we have hot water treatment, 50 to 60 degrees centigrade temperature is there, and we have to deep only for the 15 to 20 seconds. Seconds. Then white tip nematode of the rice is uh, affluent or is bassy. In the rice seeds, we have to deep the seeds only for the 30 to 60 seconds in uh, in the 50 to 60 degree hot water. Afterwards, we have to remove the seeds, dry in uh, under the shade, and then you can go for the planting. So the physical methods means it's just use of the one of the force of the, na the nature for that is temperature to control the nematodes. Uh, I think uh, should go for the soil solarization because it comes under the physical method. So soil solarization means uh, I have told you about this, the uh, wrapping of these uh, beds with the help of the uh, 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 plastic paper. And this plastic paper are should be of white color or black color. Black color is for to control the weeds, but white color is uh, to control the nematodes or let's say soil borne pathogens. And the mechanism here in the soil solarization, we are actually trapping the heat inside the uh, these beds and creating a greenhouse, small greenhouse effect. We are raising the temperature of the beds by five, uh, three to five degree as compared to the outside. And that the raised temperature is enough to kill uh, uh, the nematodes, their surviving stages inside the beds. So soil solarization, you can uh, uh, you could have seen in the most of the nursery beds, they have used the soil solarization as a measures to control the nematodes or less soil borne pathogens. Very effective method. And um, uh, only one thing is here important that we have to cover up these beds fully because there should not be any leakage. And we have to moist the soil, moist the bed. Because in the dry, if you go for heating the dry soil, the nematodes undergoes the anhydrobatic stages. And once they have gone to the anhydrobatic stages, then again, it is very difficult to control the nematodes even in, in soil solarized beds. So what is important here, you have to moist the soil, moist the bed, cover up with this uh, the uh, uh, with the polythene paper. And uh, you have to keep this for 15 to 20 days. So moist soil, will what will happen? In the moist soil, these propagules or whatever the uh, resting stages of the nematodes are there, they will uh, they will not go under the anaerobatic stages. They will come to the the normal their vermiform stages, and then they are exposed to this heat. So this is the mechanism which uh, uh, people have to use because soil solarization normally uh, in the nursery beds is very much uh, useful strategies there. So it's called as plastic mulching or let's say soil solarizations. Next comes to the cultural methods where our agronomic interventions is most important uh, 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 because um, most of the nematodes are, uh, are very crop specific, uh, like let's say the heterodera, avenue, excess nematode. There's a rotation of this crop with the uh, another non-host crop. Let's say growing of the non-host crop in between two susceptible ones, or let's say non-host crop uh, which is economically viable. And uh, if you rotate this crop with the other crops, the soil and crop environment will be altered. And this alteration will have definitely on the nematicidal effect, or let's say uh, the effect which is not favorable to the nematode propagation. So this culture method, say there is a crop rotation. Then you can see here the wheat uh, is growing. So if you uh, a rotation with the wheat and wheat and fenugreek and wheat, Definitely, you can see here the difference of wheat after wheat means uh, the crop after crop. There is only monoculture if you if you favor, then the nematode population will build up within a, a short period of time. But if you rotate with the, another uh, the crop like the fenugreek or uh, let's say gram or let's say uh, the pulses, uh, it will definitely have the impact on the uh, uh, soil uh, nematodes. Now, most of the nematode disease is spread through the planting material, like borrowing nematode in banana suckers, citrus nematode in citrus samplings. Uh, this I, I told you that is the healthy planting material is the most uh, we have to use. So whenever we are choosing any seedlings from this nursery, uh, we have to see or we have to check whether these seedlings are to be infected by nematodes or not. Uh, because once the nematode is entering in our main field, it's very difficult to control. So the health, uh, 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 choosing the healthy planting material is the most important. Then crop sanitation, sanitation 
means removal and destruction of root stubbles soon after the harvest uh, particularly though some of the nematodes they reside in uh, uh, into the the, uh, the uh, root stubbles or let's say in the crop uh, leftovers and uh, where the nematodes able to survive uh, and able to infect in the next gen uh, next season crop organic manure and amendments these are are most uh, important uh, they have dual effect that one effect is they increase the population of microorganism uh, including nematode enemies and antagonist and some of these organic manuring like fym or let's say uh, a slurry these they have the decomposition products like fatty acids which are uh, very toxic to the plant uh, plant parasitic nematodes and finally they also they leads to the improve the growth by uh, av making available the nutrients to the plants so these organic amendments and manuring is most important uh, uh for management of the peepins fallowing and flooding these are also the some of the strategies in the agronomic practices uh particularly fallowing means you have to keep our land fallow without uh, cultivating uh where the plant parasitic nematodes are obligate parasites and they can't survive without the food uh and flooding is here uh, uh, we have to keep uh, a land full with of uh, water at certain level in the rice particularly this practice is following where the nematodes is able to uh, die due to the there is no oxygen in the flooded lands but these methods normally uh, when when there is a uh, water is available you can able to use that this kind of methods then trap crop trap crop means they can able to trap the nematodes like crotolaria one of the plant uh, where the nematodes is able to penetrate inside the roots but can't develop further more so we can use these such kinds of plants as trap crop or we can also use the the leaf of this uh, crotolaria as a green manure uh, or let's say cake neem uh, a crotolaria cake for uh, uh, management of the nematodes some of the antagonistic crops because certain uh, 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 crops and plants they have the root exudates in uh, contains nematoxic compounds like onion garlic tagetes asparagus they can be also you you can able to uh, cultivate this crop uh, into the main field and they can also use as a intercrop in the most of the horticulture crops and the roots exudates of these plants uh, they have the effect on the nematode population uh, time of sowing is uh, particularly in case of the uh, wheat uh, where the uh, cyst nematode is able to infect in after the late sown wheat crop but advancing the crop sowing by 2 to 3 weeks escape the nematode infection uh, older crops suffers less damage if the infection even endures uh, because older crops have their uh, again compensate the nematode damage but if the uh, uh, the let sown wheat or let sown plants uh, if you planted or if you sow the particularly this the susceptible stage of the crop is coincided with the uh, the pathogen arrival or let's say the nematode attack and that also have the uh, uh, very economic impact on our crop plants now the host resistance which is very very uh, another strategy because we need uh, some of the resistance varieties the plants can able to even uh, uh, itself uh, repel or let's say uh, destruct the nematodes a very effective very economical method uh, which is environmentally also safe and uh, uh, some of the, you can see here the uh, barley wheat citrus coffee potato tomato coffee some of this uh, resistance strains and resistance selections we have we have selected against some of the nematodes and what is important in this resistance variety is that we have to uh, grow these resistance varieties even in the, there is a high population of the nematodes also there so these resistance varieties able to uh, repel them able to uh, even nematode infection is also there in resistance varieties but that much of not causing uh, the economic damage to us now let's comes to the biological control where the uh, some of the nematodes i have told about this the, the they have also they have their enemies you can see in this picture one nematode is uh, able to feed on on other nematode uh, but most of interest is in this predaceous fungi most of the fungi are also present they have they have their capacity to capture the nematode you can they can they can have a capacity their hypi 
uh, structured in such a way that they can able to trap the nematodes uh, with the help of these rings uh, around the nematode. And once the nematode is a trap in their network, uh, they propagate or they proliferate there on their body. So some of the nematodes like the ductilaria, ductilia, arthropotritis, stylophages, these are, they have, they're trapping fungi these because they have their attracting sticky knobs are also there. So once the nematode is uh, 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 coming in contact with these kinds of the fungi or these kinds of these uh, hypi structures, these hypi attach to their cuticle and uh, uh, once they attach to the cuticle, they're able to uh, produce the constricting rings around the whole of the body and then they can able to trap the, uh, the nematodes inside the fungi. The network. So these are the arthropotritis oligospora is very, very much uh, even uh, 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 very, uh, very promising biocontrol agents. Uh, nowadays we have the uh, uh, compounds uh, and marketable uh, uh, formulation of this arthropotritis. Very, very, uh, uh, very promising biocontrol agents because uh, they have their targets on the nematodes. And biocontrol agents have their one other impact is that they don't have any other effect on other organisms. They are very target specific, and they are you can see here the hypi modification that the uh, uh, the sticky knobs are there. Some of the spores are also there. You can see here egg parasitic like Pestulomyces, uh, Lilacinus, and Poconia clamatoscoria. These two fungi are egg parasitic fungi. They they attack on the eggs of the nematodes, and uh, on the eggs they their spore attached to their the, uh, uh, the chitin content of the eggs and they proliferate, the fungi penetrate inside the eggs and they can able to kill the, the, the juveniles, which is the developing juveniles inside the eggs. So these are the, some of the pestilomyces and poconia is normally, we have the uh, marketable formulations about this fungi and normally farmers are using these pestilomyces and lilacinus and poconia climate for Very promising egg parasitic fungi are present. Some of these female parasitic fungi are there, uh, like the nematophthora gynophila. Uh, although we do not have really any formulation about this uh, female parasitic, but uh, uh, this uh, uh, female parasitic fungi, uh, uh, they are found in the nature and they attack on the, the particularly the female of the root knot nematode. Some of the parasitic uh, bacteria are present, like the pasturia penetrants, and these pasturia, uh, these bacteria, they have their own endospore. They attach this endospore from the cuticle of the juveniles, and from that endospore, uh, the the bacteria proliferate inside the body of the uh, uh, nematode. And as soon as this uh, uh, nematode develops into the female, the spores of this bacteria. Uh, with the full of the uh, uh, full in the full of the uh, inside the body of the nematode, and they afterwards the body burst uh, from the root, and from that body the spores are releasing uh, into the nature, and these again spores are attaching to the the, the next juveniles. So this pasture penetrance uh, uh, in the Western countries we uh, we have the one of the formulation of this pasture penetrance, but in India we do not have. Uh, any marketable formation about this pasture penetrance. Only the pasture spores we can get uh, uh, from uh, for research purposes, and these spores we can able to uh, infect to the juveniles. And you can see the very promising and uh, uh, bacteria. Only one bacteria have been reported as causing uh, damage to the nematodes. Uh, coming to the chemical control, and I think uh, I, we have one lecture on nematicides, uh, so I will not take. Uh, uh, that much of uh, in a deep uh, way that chemical controls be in. Uh, and on the 4th of March, we have a lecture on nematicides and history and their formulations and their types. So only I will cover here when to use the nematicides or let's say uh, 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 nematode killing substances when PI is very high. So I told you that when initial population level was very high, uh, crop is very much valuable. Like suppose the ornamental crops are there, or let's say flower crops are there, and if you want the quick results, then and then uh, we we have to use the nematicides. So, but problem is the nematicides is that they have the residue problem because I told you that 99% of these pesticides are washed away, you know, washed down into nature. They causes the groundwater pollution, uh, pollution or let's say environmental pollution. 
they are again toxic to the non target organism uh, most of the chemicals like fumigants they are having the non uh, toxicity effect on non target organism and a resurgence of the pest problem because we are targeting one pest but many of the times happens that the very minor pest of the crop or very minor nematode of the crop is becoming a major nematode because the resurgence problem are due to use of continuous use of nematicides and the the final which is most important that is cost concentration because most of the nematicides and pesticides are expensive so they have the classification like fumigants and non fumigants non fumigants we have organocarbamates and organophosphates in fumigants we have mostly uh, highly volatile compounds the fumigants now normally uh, now fumigants are not using only at the very restricted level uh, at a nursery level these fumigants are using these are all fumigants which are mentioned here these are all already been banned uh, uh, because of their uh, high toxic effect on environment but fumigants have their own uh, uh, advantages that fumigants they release very slowly release their the chemicals into the uh, soil and they are blocking the enzymes of the nematodes and because of that the nematode is killed but the fumigants have uh, uh, particularly they have very much toxic effect in the uh, soil ecosystems and because of that fumigants have been withdrawn from the uh, uh, market but non fumigants we have because non fumigants means we uh, they uh, they have the contact and they have the systemic action uh, they are effective against insect also they effective at low doses low doses they effect easily apply and easily handle and they are less phytotoxic and mostly important is that they do not have they uh, sorry they have the systemic in nature so once we apply at one portion of the plant we can able to get the results at another portion of the plants also so most of the organophosphates like uh, ethoprop pensulfothion forate nemafas thymate nemacure these are organophosphates op compounds and organocarbamates mostly we have again withdrawn uh, uh, and stop their production because of again the pollution and the pesticide residue effect like alticar carbofuron methamsurium oxymel nitrate furanen uh, these are the nematicides uh, nowadays in the market one uh, flucyprothrion is uh, one nematicide we have registered only one nematicide is registered uh, in the cibrc list uh, how to use then these nematicides uh, we can use for the seedling bare root treatment where we can uh, use the nematicides because uh, at the seed treatment or seedling root treatment we can use the nematicides coating deeping nursery bed treatment or let's say the row treatment in widely spaced crops or let's say spot application in the perennials where we can uh, economizing this uh, use of the nematicides or let's say pesticides so that uh, uh, it can be effectively utilized so this is all about the uh, the management aspect but now it is it has the integrated aspect has changed the definitions and it's become now hexagon of the the green farming or let's say the the farming of sustainable agriculture and here we can have the integrated cultivation of the land because all the tillage operations like preparatory tillage or let's say interculturing tillage operations whatever the operations which we are doing in this soil or let's say in our area they have the impact on the insect pest population on uh, 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 any disease proliferation and so this is most important hexagon uh, let's say one component that's tillage operations or let's say cultivation of that. then integrated crop management which includes all agronomic practices starting from the seed treatment seedling treatment to the uh, crop management let's say uh, uh intercropping crop rotation relay cropping trap cropping growing of non host crop border cropping uh, uh two row cropping wide space cropping all whatever the integrated crop or let's say agronomical measures are there so these are comes under the integrated crop management because they have their own effect on the insect pest nematode mite disease uh, population the next one is the integrated nutrient management integrated nutrient management means here we whatever we are applying to the our crops as a, uh, for uh, for enhancing the yield it should uh, also in, uh, impart a resistance in the plant so in nutrient management is a is a, a very crucial part in our 
uh, organic farming or let's say the integrated aspects because whatever the nutrients which we are actually giving to the our uh, plant let's say nitrogen phosphorus potassium they have actually they have the effect on the crop plants and and as soon as let's say example of uh, silicons when you apply the silicon it gives imparts to the resistance to the in the plant uh, to cope up the damage caused by the pests and diseases so the nutrient management is very very important so how much your crop is very much nutritious uh, uh, the crop will able to sustain the damage caused by the matter then crop sanitation companies also important whatever the leftover of the crop or let's say stubbles or let's say uh, like sugarcane trashes or whatever the uh, 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 crop uh, st um, stubble management is also you can see in the crop sanitation campaign removal of the weeds from the border or let's say removal of the host crop uh, uh, from the main field that comes under crop sanitation campaign where uh, we can able to manage uh, the the survive uh, the alternate host management is most important because most of the diseases most of the insect even nematodes they can able to survive on alternate host so if you remove this this alternate host from the main field this is comes under crop sanitation campaign then consistent use of biological components like the, the use of the uh, 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 botanicals uh, biological organic amendments biological components like the biocontrol agents like uh, what i told about the few some of the uh, parasitic fungi parasitic bacteria so consistently you have to use it because we have to increase their number you have to increase their population in our field and then and then it can able to uh, affect uh, in a sustainable manner uh, on the insect pest and nematode population and the last one is the collective farming proper advice and precautions because nowadays on um, uh, numerous chemicals several chemicals are there in the market and everybody is advising that you just go and spray for this uh, this uh, this chemical we can have this effect and that effect so uh, here the proper advice is from the uh, recognized institutions is most important because uh, these chemicals are expensive too because it, uh, it also increases the cost of cultivation. Uh, so proper advice is most important. You have to take the proper precautions while applying the chemicals, while applying any uh, 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 strategy for management of nematodes. And even collective farming is also an important one. In a, a, in a cooperative way, some of these uh, strategies, which we, if you use it, then definitely the crop pest management will not build up you know, cause the economic damage. So this is the hexagon of the uh, integrated aspects of the uh, insect pest and disease management. So this is all about the uh, the uh, today's all about the some of the nematode management aspects like strategies uh, like from legislative to the biological control nature but let's up to the candidate control uh, we have mul multiple strategies we have but selection of that strategies uh, and its application is uh, is uh, is most important so this is all about uh, your today's topic of the uh, principles of mineral management I have covered the not only on the aspect of the micro aspect, but I have also covered the uh, some of the strategies are also common to the insect pest and disease management also. So, <clears throat> any questions or any doubts regarding to please go ahead. Hello. 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 Ah, Sir, I yeah. have a question. Yes. Which is the best method for controlling nematodes in uh, not horticulture crops? Not a single one. Not a single one. Okay. If in you cannot, crops? you cannot, you cannot rely on only one method because that is this hmm. is the problem where actually integrated aspect means. It's a judicial application of the each and every method. Let's say the part of that method. 
So you cannot just rely on one method that uh, only by using the one method you can able to control the impact matter. And if you are asking for the horticulture crops because the crop stand is a, a, uh, such in a long duration uh, where you have to use the multiple strategies. Let's say the uh, soil solarization from, from nursery point of view to the up to the last up to the biological control. So you have to use the some uh, methods in a very judicial in judicial way. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Anyone questions? Any other? Hello. Hello. Uh, dear participants, if you are having any questions, you can ask, please. Have you understood? Yes, sir. Okay. If there is no question, ah, okay, well, the chat box. Better. How can we manage root not by biologically? I have told you about the biological methods. It includes the the particularly nematodes is present in the soil, and the there are in the soil it's a eco complex system where particularly the fungi and bacteria are the major enemies of the nematodes, particularly the uh, I have told about the nematodes, which have the stages like ju egg stage, juvenile stage, and adult stage. So egg stage, some of these fungi are attacking on egg stages. Uh, in case of root knot nematode, particularly the female lay the eggs in a, a masses. Uh, after 300 to 500 uh, eggs laid by the e uh, or, of the single female. So if we have here one uh, strategy to uh, uh, to control the uh, eggs by uh, to control the nematodes and uh, checking their further spread by use of the egg parasitic fungi like the Pestilomyces and Poconia. This uh, fungi they have their uh, 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 let's say they have their capacity to proliferate inside the eggs. They can able to dissolve the chitin content of the eggs and they can able to kill the uh, uh, the developing embryo or developing juveniles inside the eggs. So this is one strategy where you can able to target the eggs. The second one is the on the females. So females we have the nematophthora gynophila. Only this only one female, only one fungi is able to attack on the reproductive system of the female. And once it is damaged, the female is unable to give the lay lay the eggs, and that uh, uh, that particularly gives you use to stop the further spread of the nematophthora. The second one, uh, the third one is on the juvenile stages. And juvenile stages, we have the uh, ductilaria, ductilla, or arthrobotritis fungi, which they have their uh, sticky spores uh, uh, as their surviving strategy. And these sticky spores they attach to the nematode cuticle. And once these spores uh, germinate on their cuticle and they're able to penetrate their hyphae inside their body of the juveniles. So this is a strategy where in case of fungi, let's say take, talk about the bacteria where only pasturia is only one bacteria uh, we are using against the nematodes. And these pasturia, they have the endospores, they attach uh, uh, to the cuticle of the uh, nematodes, particularly the juvenile stages. And these endospores, they remain attached to the throughout the life cycle of the nematode. And as soon as the nematode turns into the female, that's become, uh, become a, a, a sedentary female, from these endospores, the bacteria proliferates and propagates inside the body of the nematodes, and they're able to kill the intestine and other uh, uh, body organ structures inside the female. So this is the strategy in case of the biological. But what is important here, uh, we have to use the biological agents also in a very careful manner, because biological, uh, we have to give some time to the biological agents to work. Like suppose Pestilomyces, if you are applying, Pseudomonas, you are applying, suppose uh, Poctonia, we are applying. So we have to give them time. We have to create some of the favorable conditions to first grow and uh, let's say, survive these biocontrol agents in our field. And then and then 
their population will increase in our field. So I think that it will be the, uh, that that is the most important uh, aspect in case of value. Devji, what are the confirmed methods of field identification of nematode infection without I, without doing isolation in lab? Uh, in in some of the nematodes, you can able to identify the damage itself in the field. Like say, let's say an example in case of uh, vegetables like tomato, potato, chili, uh, uh, brinjal. Here in greenhouse, or suppose you are you are going into the field, you can able to see the uh, the fields are uh, the plants are dyed. Suppose seedlings are dyed. The drying is most uh, first thing, yellowing of the leaves, or let's say curling of the leaves. Uh, whatever the top portion of the plant is there, it is it, it, it become devitalized. So this is once where we can able to you can predict that okay nematode damage will be there in some of the in, in specific some kind of nematodes. But in case of horticulture crops. It is very difficult because in in the horticulture, let's say in pomegranate or let's say in the guava, let's say in the uh, uh, grapes, let's say in the ornamental plants like flower plants also, where you cannot able to just say uh, that this is the plant is infected by nematode. We have to isolate the, some of the damaged roots. We have to bring uh, in the laboratory and we have to see under the microscope whether it is the nematode stages are there or not. So aerial symptoms is somewhat confusing. Some are, uh, uh, most of them are interlinking with the nutrient deficiency. Uh, most of the times we are confused that this is nutrient deficiency or nematode damage. But in case of vegetables, in case of the uh, flower crops, in case of the short annual crops, we can able to uh, identify this, okay, this is nematode. Like in case of wheat, like in case of rice also, the, the length of the crop uh, is shortened or sometimes the very dwarf. Uh, 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 height of the plant, we can able to see where you can predict, where you can only justify that, okay, this is due to the nematodes damage, but not in all the, all the cases. Okay, anyone? Sir, hello? Ah, go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Ah, good afternoon. I wanted to ask, like, uh, for nutritional deficiencies also, those are the, like, similar symptoms, no? Like, yeah, if yes. you are Yellowing is there, or uh, for in that yes. case, severe cases of hmm. so, like, Hello. how to actually look at the crop and then tell that it is nematode infested or it is nutrition deficiency? That something. is, that is, I'm that is, I'm telling you, this is a hidden pest. Nematode is a yeah. hidden pest, yes, it is actually attacking on the roots, right? And whatever the symptoms which we are observing on the aerial portion, it is a, just a result of that. Uh, infection to the roots, right? Suppose the roots is a destabilized, yes, root system is, uh, uh, let's say, hampered. And because of that, the crop is showing some of the symptoms at the aerial portion. So you cannot sure to the, uh, that's why I, I told you in case of particularly vegetables, you can sure. In case of tomato, in case of uh, solanaceous vegetables, or let's say, uh, in case of cruciferous vegetables also, we can able to sure that, okay, uh, uh, the, from above plant portions, we can able to see that, okay, this is due to nematode. But in case of the other crops, like horticulture crops, where the or perennial crops, you cannot sure about the, uh, the nematodes, if damage is there or not. Maybe it is nutrient deficiency, maybe it is uh, damage to the roots by the other pest, maybe it is due to the other fungi or other phytoparasitic uh, microorganisms are there. So, uh, in that case, you cannot sure. So then for Only the of, we have to go for isolation. Yeah, isolation, isolation of the roots, isolation of the roots, bringing the roots to the laboratory and uh, observing under the microscope. Yes, sir. Okay, so thank you. Anyone? Anyone? If there is no question, then, sir, conclude. Please conclude.